Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Beer Talk. Today I'm going to take a look at one of the more common glassware options used for beer. That's going to be the American Shaker Pint. Now this one is actually common as you take a look here on the illustration of the different glasses. You can see the American Shaker Pint highlighted right there and one of the ones you usually notice in many of the bars, breweries, uh, restaurants, anywhere you're having a beer. Um, this one is very common. It's one of the easier glasses to use because not only do they use it for beer, they also use it for regular beverages as well as uh, mixed drinks so it's got a lot of uses out of it however when it comes to beer it may not necessarily be the best option so that's what we want to explore uh, through this video but before we can even talk about that we have to take a look at what I consider to be the first rule of glassware and that is you never want to drink from a frosty glass the reason being, if you drink from a frosted glass, one, it takes away from the craftsmanship done on the craft beer, and two, it actually uh, inhibits the aromas you should be experiencing from that craft beer as well. So just something to keep in mind there um, when you're out to enjoy a craft beer. If you really want, want to enjoy it, you want to try to not have it in that frosted glass. Not even some of the bartenders that serve actually know that as well. More and more bars I've seen have actually have that option available now where they're not putting everything into that frosted type glass but sometimes you have to ask them to receive it in a glass that is not frosted I think if you do that you may find yourself enjoying that craft beer a little bit more but in dissecting the American Shaker Pint the two key things you really have to look at is one the Shaker Pint was never really meant for draft beers um, it's more of a kind of a utility type glass and when you do use it it's more designed for beers that have thin heads and no vibrant aromas the way the glass is actually cut it will not hold head retention usually as long and also if there's a beer in there that has, that has a good aroma you're going to be cutting some of that out um, it really does make a difference in some of the glassware you're using for some beers and most people just aren't as aware of that. Um, there's some arguments where people will say you will use any glass you want to use. And initially, that can be the situation. But as you drink more of that beer and you're enjoying it over a longer period, you're actually cutting short some of those things taking place with the aroma or like the head, for instance. So why do people use them everywhere if they're not always designed to be the best uh, glass where to use? I think it comes down to really laziness and what I would consider convenience. In a lot of the establishments, because of their utility use, they're a lot easier to have around. Um, if you were going to replace all of those, you're going to have a cost factor in there to do that for your bar. But in essence, that's actually the better thing to do. When you have a IPA, that's a good IPA, you want to have that like in that snifter glass. You want to be able to have it where the flavor swirls around and have it in a glass that is actually designed to be served in just like for some of the ones that are cut to be in certain other type of glasses like your tumbler glasses or some of your ale glasses the reason the glasses are cut that way is for a certain reason you just want to know what beers you can actually use where so in keeping that in mind you look at the stuff out there and you say well these glasses are like everywhere you see beers from light to dark being served in these glasses and unfortunately that's true um, but if we can actually figure out the best way to use them, I think you can enhance your beer drinking exposure. So when it comes down to that, you have to say, well, when is the best use? What, what is the best use for a shaker pint glass? And this is like a short list that was that has been compiled that talks about some of the beers where you might want to use uh, these in an American shaker pint. Things like an American amber ale, American red ale, American wheat ale, all the way down the list. Although American Indian pale ale, I, like I said, I prefer to get that in a snifter because you have that floral aroma. You want to experience some of that tropical uh, notes you want to get out of it as well. But I have seen people use the American Indian Pale Ale in the shaker also. Um, but using a the glass, these kind of beers like this are more, the way they're designed, they can actually do a lot better in the shaker pint. You know, you don't want to put really a stout into a shaker pint or, 
uh, Belgian uh, double or triple into a shaker pint. There's a reason there's certain glassware designed to use for those type of beers. So this kind of gives you like a short list of some of the ones you might want to try. And I say, you know, compare notes. Try it in one of these versus one of the other glasses to see if there is a difference for you. I know for me there is a difference when I use certain glasswares. It is a distinct difference, but the more that you actually drink and enjoy craft beers, I think you start to notice it. It's almost the same as when people go to um, work out in athletics, there's certain things only elite athletes are going to actually know makes a difference in their body. The common person won't know that. It's the same thing with kind of like the beer drinking. There's only going to be that little bit of a difference. But if you're experienced in beer and you've had enough of them, I think you will pick that up as well. But really, uh, that's all I wanted to share with you, kind of talking about that American Shaker Pint. And I appreciate you swinging by to check out another video. Hopefully this provides some insight there um, over the course of time. We'll take a look at some of the other glassware to kind of match up with some of the beers that might be better suited for them. And if you like what you saw, please make sure you hit that like button, of course. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you definitely subscribe to stay up to speed on other videos. Things like this, these what I call what I'm calling beer talks. I'll probably do those like on Monday and Tuesdays of each week. So um, just try some different things here on YouTube. Get back into some of the beer, beer reviews later this week. And look forward to hopefully seeing you on the next video. Well, with that, I'm going to say cheers. I look forward to seeing you then.